chapter 7. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. This is a very familiar verse of Scripture. But yet God still wants to say something to us because this goes overlooked. Amen. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 15, the text says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Praise God. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for this opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk and declare glad tidings of great joy. Help me, O oh God, to help your people. For I cannot operate in my own strength. But I trust in thee on this night to anoint my lips of clay that I may speak the oracles of God and impart your divine truth in the hearts of those under the sound of my voice. And we give your name praise in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Again, we're coming out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 15. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the speaker in this text. And again, he says, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Praise God. Praise God. When many look at this text, they automatically key on the words how the false prophets are wolves in sheep's clothing. But there's a word in this particular text that we need to understand. It is looked over, and that's why many people are being bewitched. They are being deceived. They are being slaughtered in their faith because they have not done what Jesus said. When you look at this verse, the very first thing he said was, beware. Amen? Amen. And the word beware means to be cautious and alert to the dangers of. It also means to be on one's guard or to avoid. Again, the word beware means to be cautious and alert to the dangers of. It also means to be on one's guard or to avoid. Praise God. And we can see that this word beware is given us as a warning sign. Hallelujah. It is given as a warning sign and we should take heed to the warnings that is set forth in scripture. Amen. Amen. The phrase warning sign means a potential hazard, obstacle, or condition requiring special attention. It also means an early signal that something bad or dangerous might happen. Amen. That's what a warning sign is. Again, it is a potential hazard obstacle or condition requiring special attention. It also means an early signal that something bad or dangerous might happen. And this is why Jesus brings this out in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 10. He said beware of false prophets. Praise God. Even the 
Apostle John mentions this in his letter. First John chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. Praise God. He makes this statement, and we all should take heed to it because it is detrimental to whether we survive or we lose the battle. The text says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are God. Why? Must we do that? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Praise God. And many of these false prophets have entered in among us in the house of prayer, but they come in amongst us as wolves in sheep's clothing. That's why Jesus said, beware. Because you have to remember, the devil agenda has remained the same. Amen. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. Amen. And that's why you must beware. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. That means we must be on high alert. Amen. When we are given this warning sign, we must be alarmed because when Jesus makes these statements, you better know that these things are happening just as he declared it in Scripture. Praise God. But because many have not taken heed to the warning. They have suffered loss. And until this day, there are many that have been deceived. Some have been deceived and died in their sins. Some have been deceived and went home and sat down and just gave up on God. Amen. 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 The enemy has come to slaughter the faith of those in the house of God. And that's why Jesus gives us this warning sign and said, beware. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That ain't something you just read in the text and then go about your business. Because in the natural, I've never seen somebody see a beware of dog sign sitting on the fence and just ignored it and kept walking down the sidewalk. Praise God. When they see it, they take heed. And much of the time they would uh, walk in the street or cross all the way over across the street and walk on the sidewalk on the other side. Are you listening to me? Because they understand the potential dangers of walking there. Is that important? 
Is that important? Amen. Amen. Just look at 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. We are given many warnings throughout the scriptures. And it behooves me that we don't take heed to the warnings that are given us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The scripture says here in verse 17, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 17, it says, you therefore beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm reminded of what the apostle said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is this what uh, the apostle Paul writes to the saints in Corinth? Yeah. Even the apostle Peter said on the day of Pentecost, how the beloved continue steadfastly in the apostle's doctrine. But we must remember what the text says in 2 Peter chapter 3 in verse 17 he said beloved see you know these things before what things are you talking about go back to verse 16 the text says also in all his epistles speaking of the epistles that were written by the apostle Paul speaking of them of, thing, of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. He said, you therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest you also be led away from the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness. Amen. Praise God. Didn't the Bible say be steadfast, unmovable, that if you're not careful, you can fall from your own steadfastness by way of giving heed to the error of the wicked. Praise God. And we know there's a lot of religious error in Christendom. Amen? There's a lot of religious error in Christendom. And this is why you got to take heed. You can't just lay down and, and, and get comfortable and think you made it. Amen. Ain't nobody made it, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. We must fight the good fight of faith and lay home to eternal life. Until you heard those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Until you have been changed from mortality to immortality, from corruption to incorruption, He brings this out in verse 17. He said, beware lest you also being led away from the error of the wicked. That sounds like seduction. Being enticed. Beguiled by the serpent as he did Eve in the garden. Glory to God. Does that make sense? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is why he brings this out over in Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and verse 18. Praise God. And there's a lot of religious error out here. And if we're going to be spared from the deception that is spreading all over Christianity, then we're going to have to obey the word of God because that is your refuge, your safe haven. Praise God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous brother can do it in vain are safe. Amen. Romans chapter 16. Look at this. 
Romans chapter 16 beginning at verse 17 the, the apostle says now I beseech you brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them praise God, praise God. did you see that it is not the word avoid one of the definitions given for the word beware amen, amen. he said mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and the doctrine that they learned was taught by the apostles amen. it wasn't taught by any random preacher it was taught by the they were taught by the apostles whom Jesus had sent. Amen. Hallelujah. And we know the apostle Paul was sent to the Gentiles to minister the grace of God unto them. Are you listening to me? Amen. And that's why he said, Mark them. If any man come and preach any other gospel than that which we preach, let him be a curse. Come on. Then he said in verse 18, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches to see the hearts of the simple. Look at the religious error. Look at the religious error. Praise God. And that's why Jesus told us to search the scriptures. Isn't that what the Bereans did? Because they didn't want to be received. The Bereans wanted to be saved. They wanted to make sure that any random preacher couldn't come out and tell them anything. And they were just going to say amen to it. They weren't going to say amen to what the Apostle Paul was preaching until they confirmed it with the word of God. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? Amen. Does that make sense? We are given a warning sign. What is that warning sign? Beware. And we must beware. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We must beware. In Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. This is what the apostle brings out. Philippians chapter 3 beginning in verse 1. The text reads, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me indeed it is not grievous, but for you it is safe. He said, Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of concession. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he has well, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Praise God. Now we go back to verse 3 of Philippians. Or verse 2 rather. In Philippians chapter 3. What did he say in the text? Beware of dogs. And those dogs he was referring to were those Judaizers. Those unbelieving Jews that thought they were saved. That trusted in their own righteousness. They rejected Jesus as being the Messiah. Amen. Praise God. God. Hallelujah. And you know what they were doing? They were going around to Jesus who had already been saved. They were under the blood. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost. But those Judaizers were going around telling them that they were not saved until they had been circumcised in the flesh. Amen? Amen. Are you listening? Amen. That's why he said, beware of evil workers. These are people that's doing the work of the enemy. Sowing discord. What did he say? Mark them. They cause divisions and contraries to the doctrine that you have been taught. He said beware of concision. The word concision means to cut. And that's what those Judaizers were doing. They were spreading throughout the Gentile world. 
among them who had already been saved under the ministry of the Apostle Paul. They were telling them they wasn't saved until you get circumcised. They was trying to add. Hello, somebody. Praise God. They was telling them, unless you are circumcised in the flesh, you're not saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. They was teaching that that was necessary in order to be converted. Which was not the truth. Amen. How many know salvation comes through grace Amen. as we put our faith in Christ Jesus? Amen. When you repent and believe on the Lord who died on Calvary's cross, Amen. he will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you that you hear. We must rightly divide the word of God. We are not under the law. We are under grace and truth. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Nobody's saved by the works of the law. You know what the apostle said to the saints in Galatia? No man shall be justified by the works of the law. For the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. That's why we must repent and put our faith in Christ Jesus so that he might come to take up residency in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's look at the Gospel of Matthew chapter 16. The Gospel of Matthew Chapter 16, praise God. Hallelujah. And I want to begin reading here. At verse number 5. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 5 says, And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. Do you not yet understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets you took up. Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets you took up. How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not of you concerning bread, but that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. You see that? Does it matter what doctrine you believe? Absolutely. Praise God. Now there's a movement today called the Emergent Church that has done away with doctrine. And a lot of different Church organizations are coming together and they're able to do that because they've done away with doctrine. They say doctrine divides. And you got to believe the truth of God does separate the righteous from the wicked. Hello, somebody. Amen. Jesus said, I came not to send peace, but a sword. Hallelujah. Amen. 
talking about the doctrine that they were teaching. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to know that the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees was speaking about doctrine. It was also speaking about hypocrisy and sin. That was the leaven of the Pharisees. The bad doctrine that they were teaching. Their hypocrisy and their sin. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's why he brought that out. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Because you got to understand. The, the doctrine that they taught had leaven in it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And leaven was a fermented dough. Amen. Amen. That caused it to rise. And you know what the apostle Paul brought out in Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 9. Praise God. He said, A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Leaven is a type of sin. Right. Amen? Amen? When people got leaven in them, that's why they always rising up in the flesh. Right. They got leaven in them. Glory to God. And that's what the leaven is a type of. It's a type of sin. Hypocrisy. Amen. And false doctrine. That's why he said beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And one of the main things he was bringing out was the bad doctrine that they were teaching. Now there were some things they were teaching that was true. That's what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 23. The things that they teach you to do, observe and do them. Those are the things that were true. He said, but don't do after their works for they say and do not. See, they were hypocrites. They were hypocrites. Come on, somebody. That's why he said, beware. Hallelujah. How I many know you gotta be on guard? You gotta be on your guard. You gotta be on high alert. Glory to God. Because we must do what Jesus said. Take heed. We must take heed. You are responsible for your own soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Amen. You are responsible for your own soul. Glory to God. Go to Colossians chapter 2. We are continued to be warned. The saints of God are being warned. Jesus Christ, his apostles, and the prophets are blowing the trumpet. They're sounding the alarm. They're warning the saints to beware. Hallelujah. Again, we find in Colossians chapter 2, beginning in verse 6. And the text reads, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. We must abide in his word. We must walk in the spirit. That is the life of the believer. Hallelujah. He said we're to be rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith as you have been taught. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Then he says beware. Lest any man spoil you. Through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Praise God. How many know that man has a wisdom? Even the devil has a wisdom. There's such a thing called sensual and sensual and earthly wisdom. Come on, you got to beware. Because all wisdom is not good wisdom. Hallelujah. It talks about these different types of wisdom. But then it brings out the wisdom of God. And it shows you what the wisdom of God looks like. 
what it says. James chapter 3. That's why we got to be careful. Because everything that sounds good ain't good. Hallelujah. Everything that sounds logical ain't biblical. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we're to try the spirit by the word of God. We're to search the scriptures to see if those things are so. We're not to let people come by and just bamboozle us, hoodwink us, manipulate us, lie to us, deceive us, and we put up no fight. Hallelujah. The scripture teaches us to put on the whole armor of God. He gave you a defensive armor, but he also gave you an offensive weapon. And the sword of the spirit is the word of God. And how many know we got to learn how to swing the sword? Come on, somebody. Because Jesus was swinging it in the wilderness of temptation. Are you listening to me? David was swinging it. Praise God. When it cut off Goliath's head. After he cut him down. When he shot at him with that slingshot. And that smooth stone was guided right into his forehead where he knocked him down and killed him. And David cut his head from off his shoulders. Come on. Are you listening to me? Praise God. In James. Chapter 3. Look at this. In verse number, let's start here at verse number 13. The text says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, Devilish. For where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Praise God. This is how you can tell the difference from the wisdom of God and all these other different types of wisdom that may seem logical, but they're not biblical. They don't line up with the word of God. Are you listening to me? And this is why you got to be skeptical when you hear a thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. That's why the text teaches us. Beware. Amen. Amen. He said, beware. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I making this up? No. Is it written in the scriptures? Amen. Should we beware Amen. of false prophets? False brethren, false teachers, false prophetess, hallelujah, false apostles, hallelujah. We got mothers that ain't true mothers in Zion. Should we beware of them? You got to try everything by the word of God. That's what's going on. To allow you to see who is of God, who's not of God. What is the spirit of truth and what is the spirit of error? How many know the word is true? Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Praise God. And if the word is truth, everything that comes. Hello, somebody. 
philosophy. It sounds good. Yeah. Sound logical to the carnal mind. Yeah. But it's not biblical. Yeah. It's not the revelation of God. some silver tongue folks out there. They are good speakers. They're good orators. They can present a thing in a way that make you believe it. Are you listening to, you know, like an old car salesman? Glory to God. Are you listening? And people are eating up because it sounds good. By good words, fair speeches, they Colossians chapter 2, he said, Beware this man spoil you through philosophy. That's man's wisdom, earthly wisdom. They say, Spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit. After the, the traditions of men. After the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's why you got to take heed to everything you hear. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care how good it sounds. Get in the Word of God. Amen. Let's search this thing out. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get in prayer and you ask God, is this right? right. And you don't be quick to jump. To conclusion, you gotta learn how to wait on God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You gotta learn how to wait on God. Amen. You just don't jump to conclusions. You just you heard somebody walking up in upstairs in your attic, and you say, "Oh God is talking to me." <laughs> Praise God. You listening to me? Amen. That's why you gotta be careful. He said, "My sheep hear my voice." And the only way you want to hear the voice of God, you got to pray. You got to walk close. You got to bond with him. Hallelujah. Like a little baby bonding with her mother while she's in her stomach. That baby bonding with mama. She know mama's voice. He know mama's voice. Are you listening to me? Even after that baby was birthed. That baby can be across the room and hear mama's voice. And their head begin to turn the direction. When they hear mama's voice, come on somebody, glory to God, somebody have their praise, the Lamb of God, who came to take away the sins of the world. We must beware, we must beware. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 12. The Gospel of Luke chapter 12. Amen. Listen to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse number 15, the scripture reads, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life Consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Praise God. What did he say in the text? Take heed. We have heard that more than once. Yeah. More than twice. You can find it in the gospel of Matthew chapter 24. Yeah. Jesus teaches his disciples to take heed that no man deceive you. 
You can go to the second Thessalonians chapter 2. He says the same thing. Take heed that no man deceive you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's important that we do just that. Amen. Whatsoever he tell you to do, you do that. He said take heed. Don't ignore it. Don't walk past it. Take heed. And beware of cups. You know in Exodus chapter 20, the Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not covet. You should not cover in, covet anything that is your neighbor's. You shouldn't covet your neighbor's wife. You shouldn't covet your neighbor's husband. Hello, somebody. Amen. The word covetousness is idolatry. Covetousness is also greed. Amen. Amen. When people covet, they always desire to have something that doesn't belong to them. Amen. 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 She wants another man's, another, she wants uh, another woman's husband. She wants another, another man. He wants another man's wife. You're not to covet their home. You're not to covet anything that is your neighbor. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Covetousness is idolatry and it's also greed. See, these things sneak up on us, but we don't pay it any attention. We don't pay it any attention. Praise God. He said, beware of covetousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Colossians, listen to this. Colossians. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. How many believe in this lesson on tonight? Amen. Now, Amen. I didn't write this. It's, it's written in the text. Because he teaches us to beware. And one of the things he says also is to beware of covetousness. These things can sneak upon you. And we don't pay these things any attention because things like that, we don't think can keep us out the kingdom. But they can creep up up on you and get in your heart. Amen. And now you're breaking the law. Amen. When you're not walking in love, you are breaking the law. Amen. Love is the fulfillment of the law. But when you're breaking the law, then you are sinning against God. Amen. And one of those things is covetousness. Amen. And covetousness is greed. It's idolatry. Praise God. Does that make sense? Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Let me just move on to another verse of scripture. Praise God. How many understand this? Amen. That covetousness is idolatry. It's also greed. Desire to have something that does not belong to you. A man's life does not consist of the things that he possesses. Amen? Amen? You should not seek after the things of this world. He says, set your affections on things above and not on the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Does that make sense? Yeah. Glory to his name. He said, take heed and beware of covetousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we live in a day now, many are going after things. Hallelujah. They've been taught that gain is godliness. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. They've been taught that gain is godliness. But that is not the truth. Gain 
is not godliness. Hallelujah. You can have a lot of stuff, but that does not testify that you know God. That does not say that you're living close to God because of the amount of things that you have. Amen? A man's life does not consist of the things that he possesses. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning at verse 3, 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning at verse 3, praise God. The text says, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but talking about questions and stripes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, and evil surmising, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Amen. 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 Remember, a man's life does not consist of the things that he possesses. This is one of the problems that occurred among the beloved that were in the city of Laodicea. The church of Laodicea. They forsook the right way and began to go after material possessions. Praise God. And they became spiritually bankrupt. They lost their anointing. Amen. Are you listening to me? And this is a strategy of the enemy to get you caught up with the things of this world. Your heart becomes filled with covetousness. When you begin to desire things that you should not be desired. You begin to desire things that belong to other people. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. He goes on to say in verse 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Praise God. It should be no murmuring coming out of the mouths of the beloved. But David said in Psalms 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Praise God. No filthy communication should be proceeding out of our mouth. That includes murmuring and disputing. She blesses and curses can't come out the same fountain. Glory to God. You can't cuss one minute and praise God the next. You can't be disputing and murmuring one minute and hallelujah the next. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. That's a double-minded individual. And a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. They can't be trusted. They can't be trusted. They say and do not. They between two opinions. Hallelujah. Amen. They are chameleon. Amen. They change. Amen. Into whatever environment they are so that they amen, can mix in with these particular people when they are around them. And then when they go in the church, they change, praise God, costumes, so they can mix in with them church people and pretend to be a child of God. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? He said, beware of covetousness. We must beware. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is what the text is bringing out. And we must give more earnest heed to the things that we have heard lest at any time we let them slip. Amen? Glory to God. 
How many understand that when we are given this warning sign to beware, Amen. the scripture says, take heed. Amen. Don't just lay down and get comfortable and act like you haven't heard it. Because it's a blessing to receive an early signal that something bad or dangerous might happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if I get an early signal that something bad or dangerous might happen, then I can escape. That which is or which might happen that is bad that is hazardous, that can bring potential death to my life. But I gotta take heed and beware. Hallelujah. How many know that's the love of God? That's the love of God. Warning us. Warning us before things actually transpire. And I want you to know that when God gives us these warning signs, we better take heed to them. Because it can save your life. It can save your soul. Hallelujah. It can save your marriage. It can save your children. Hallelujah. It can save your ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we got to take heed. God is speaking to us as individuals. But yet he's speaking collectively to the house of prayer. His beloved. Them that are members of the Holy Ghost New Testament church. Hallelujah. But yet he's speaking to us individually. Right, man. Praise, God. Praise God. How many are going to beware? Hallelujah. And the Bible breaks these things out. Yeah. Does it not? Amen. He brings these things out. You're not to write it down on a piece of paper and forget all about it. You're to get the word of God in your heart. Isn't that what the scripture brings out in the Psalms concerning David? He said, his word if I hid in my heart. And if the word is going to be hid in your heart, the heart must be good soil. Amen. Must be good ground. Hallelujah. Because if the word is not good soil, you're not going to receive it. You may clap. You may say amen. You may say good point. You may say praise the Lord. But you're going to find yourself going back to the evil that you have already been doing. You're going to find yourself doing the opposite of what the word of God teaches because you will not be able to walk in the truth when the truth of God is not in your heart. David said in the Psalms, his word if I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And when the word of God It's not supposed to be a thought in your brain. When the word of God enters into your heart, it's supposed to bring a change. It's supposed to direct your steps. It's supposed to lead you in the way of righteousness. Hallelujah. Because we have too many people sitting in the house of God saying amen and going through the motions and the moment they get home, all hell breaks out. Yeah. All hell breaks loose. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The moment they get back to work tomorrow, they start acting a plum fool. Hello? Y'all not talking to me. Praise God. The moment they get by themselves and ain't nobody around, they begin to be what they've always been. 
a crooked one. Because if the word of God never takes up residency in your heart, change never happens. It never happens. You just heard it, said you believed it, gave it amen, but your, your, your walk hasn't changed. The direction you were going didn't change. Your attitude didn't change. You're still committing the same sin. You still can't overcome your flesh. You can't muzzle your tongue. You can't even, over, you can't even get the victory on those vain thoughts that are in your mind. Hello, somebody. Praise God. What did he say in the text? He said, take heed and beware. And these are not things that God is just making up. All these things are real life experience that are taking place in the house of prayer. They're taking place in this dark world. They're taking place in the lives of humanity. And if we that are born In our sin. We will renounce our Lord Jesus and lose our inheritance in that heavenly kingdom, that holy city called the New Jerusalem. Behold, somebody, we will not be able to fulfill God's purpose for our life while we are here upon the earth. We will be living with purpose. We'll just be existing, fulfilling the lust of our flesh, doing what we want to do and feeling good about it until it's time for you to die. Right. Amen. 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 He said, beware. And in our foundational text, Jesus said, beware of false prophets. He said, they come to you as wolves and sheep come back. Beware. Let's man spoil you. The philosophy is sound. It's not biblical. And if it ain't biblical, you know it ain't the Holy Ghost. But it sound good. That's why you try everything about the word. And don't let folks tell you, oh, why well, you got to run to the word all the time? <laughs> because the word is truth. Yeah. They may not believe it's truth, but do you believe it's truth? Yeah. Then you stand on what you believe. Yeah. And don't let them make you second guess whether the word of God is true. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every word of God is right. Yeah. Hallelujah yeah. to the Lamb. Is that what he said in Psalms? Chapter 33. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we got to learn how to use the word. We got to learn how to use it. He said that. And in Psalms 33, and verse number four, he said, The word of the Lord is right. And if, the, if that's true, everything else is wrong. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One verse of scripture says, every word of God is pure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every word of God is pure. It's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And you cannot allow anybody to deceive you. You can't allow them to make you second guess your faith in Christ. Amen. That's what it says in Psalms chapter 30 and verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. See that? He's a what? A shield. That's protection. He's a shield to everyone that what? Put their trust in him. You must put your trust in God and his word. He said beware. So therefore, you must take heed and beware. Hallelujah. Every child of God should become a threat to the devil's kingdom. Hallelujah. Because you shouldn't be one that's easily 
deceived. Exactly. Glory to God. Glory to God. When the devil come and bother you, he 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 needs to know that he in for a fight. Amen. And you ain't fighting after the flesh. You gonna fight in the Holy Ghost. You gonna fight with the Word of God. Come on, somebody. Cause that's what Jesus used in the wilderness. He said, "It is written." understand what we're saying tonight. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes, does. does that make sense? Yes. Hallelujah. We must beware. And just as that neighbor has that sign, beware of dog posted on the fence. Jesus is posting warning signs all over the place so that his people might have ample warning so that they might have an upper hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil shouldn't have one up on us. He shouldn't be two steps before us. We should be two, three, four, five, six steps ahead of him. Because we have been given spiritual intel. We've been given divine knowledge. We have been given insight by the scriptures of truth. And therefore we should not be blind to the enemy. That he should gain an advantage over us. We should be more than one, more than two, more than three steps ahead of him. That's why when the enemy begins to move, we shouldn't even marvel. We saw it coming because God told us it was coming. And we should be ready for it. Being fully armed. Hallelujah. Being fully armed that we might be able to stand in the evil day. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says, beware. Amen. And I encourage every child of God in this house to take heed. Amen. Because the word of God that has been given us is to warn us. Amen. So that we will not fall prey to the enemy. Somebody give God a praise in Jesus' name. 